one piece of feedback. I was listening to a um uh, a previous podcast that you guys did with uh, the wonderful Liz Gibbons. She's ah. our CMS sales specialist. Elizabeth. And there was mention of leather chairs, whiskey and uh, cigars. <laughs> but I'm looking around the studio and I'm, I'm noting a distinct absence of those. Welcome to Under the Hood. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Under the Hood, the show for sales and marketing professionals that talks about all the latest tools and trends that are relevant to you, of course. And hey, if you haven't already, would you mind please just like giving that subscribe button just a little, just a little pap, you know, (laughs) just a little, (laughs) give it a little, a little little, uh, poke for me and uh, I'd really appreciate that. And we all would because we appreciate your viewership. So thank you. And Ladies and gentlemen, I have some sad news. This week, I will not be joined by my usual co-host, unfortunately. Mr. Tony Ease is out sick. However, I would like to introduce uh, my guest for today. Um, Before I say his name, I will say that he is, and I quote, team leader and senior growth specialist at HubSpot. I know, amazing, right? He offers business uh, strategic guidance on optimizing businesses' performance through operational alignment, increased efficiency, and sustainable scalability by using the HubSpot platform. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to introduce to you the excellent Mr. John Stapleton. (laughs) Thank you for having me, Gabe. Um, I, it is very sad that Tony is not here, and you can think of me as sort of your uh, fourth pick quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, I can I, I can bring a bit of value today. Yeah, man, <laughs> I can see you as a quarterback as a very helpful uh, person to throw me the ball when I need it. So <laughs> I I appreciate having you here, and uh, you are great value. And hey, we last time when we met, uh, we did that uh, hug together, the HubSpot user group that uh, Salt and Stone hosts every couple of months, uh, and uh, that was really fun to hear you talking about the growth platform and AI and how that's being introduced. So yeah, no, that, that was fantastic. I, I mean, those hugs are always a great experience to actually meet some of our, uh, our customers and learn about some of the, the value they're getting, what they'd like to see. Um, I think, you know, AI is obviously a very hot button topic at the moment. It's a very buzzwordy and everyone seems to be doing it. Um, so it was nice to be able to talk about, I guess, some of the more practical applications uh, mm. that we've been working on at HubSpot. Yeah, and it was really cool and exciting to see them actually uh, in use. Um, so, you know, if you ever do want to attend a, a HubSpot user group uh, locally in Sydney, um, hit us up at Salted Stone. We run them all the time and you can see lovely people such as John at those, <laughs> um, which are really excellent. And speaking of AI, uh, because Tony is not on, there'll probably be a severe lack of this discussion <laughs> of AI because that is one of his uh, true loves in life. Uh, mm-hmm. But we're not here to talk about AI specifically today, although you know some of the tools we will discuss do include the use of AI. But if you haven't joined an episode before, let me just lay the groundwork first. Uh, this is a show where we have 10 minutes, 10 minutes only, to talk about today's topic. And when the timer runs out, we have to stop and then go into our toolkit section, which is essentially the tools that we've been playing around with recently, John, and um, I see you've got a few on the toolkit as well, which I'm excited to hear about. Um, They're very HubSpot specific, which is pretty cool. Um, And I have some of my own, um, and then we'll wrap up the episode shortly after that. So make sure you stay towards the end where you can hear both mine and John's uh, toolkits, which are very exciting for today and related to today's topic, which speaking of which I'm going to announce, are you ready for this, John? I've never been more ready in my life, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, I've got my all-star quarterback here with me, backing me up, and I'm really appreciating it. And I'm, I'm excited for it today, honestly, because today's topic is actually called Risk Versus Reward, Exploring Growth Platforms for Businesses. Okay, so I'm going to start the timer right now, and I just realized I have not... Uh, got in and preset the timer. So excuse me while I go in. See, this is Tony's job usually. So um, I put the blame on him not being here. So thanks, Uh, Tony. It's the perfect excuse. If anything falls apart today, uh, we've got an easy scapegoat we can lean across. Yeah. uh, Lean upon. (laughs) Uh, An an Eads E uh, (laughs) scapegoat. An Eads scapegoat. Because his last name's Eads, in case you didn't get the reference. Yeah, no, no, no. And and I also (laughs) find jokes, when you explain them, become a lot funnier. They are. They are. (laughs) Especially dad jokes, I've found. Absolutely. Since becoming a dad. You know what I mean? (laughs) All right. Timer is on. Here we go. 10 minutes on the clock. So 
today's topic. So talking about uh, the risk versus reward when looking to invest in a growth platform, uh, a few things come to mind in terms of the actual problems I find, and you probably find too, John, a lot of businesses face when considering moving everything to you know, a digital platform, out of traditional means, or even legacy old platforms that really aren't cutting the mustard in today's uh, fast moving uh, economy. So I want to talk about a few of the challenges and some severe ones I've seen a lot of organizations face. And just listing a few here, I've got like integration complexities. You know, like I said, those old legacy platforms, John, people move across and try to bring across old data into new platforms, you know, make the two talk to each other. Often at times it can proved to be a huge <laughs> challenge. Uh, financial investment obviously is a given. Uh, change management, data migration risks, there's security and uh, privacy things that all fold into that particular topic as well. That's a huge discussion. Uh, but one of the key ones I also wanted to talk to uh, because it really speaks to the people at those organizations is user adoption, right? It's often the mindset um, and also I guess the skill level of somebody uh, in sales or marketing moving to a growth platform. Do you find that's often quite a you know a regular challenge With, you see without a doubt um it, you know it's it's obviously hard enough for so many reasons a lot of which you've outlined actually trying to pick the right system and set it up in the first place um but i'd say the number one reason why we actually see implementations fail is adoption mm. uh, and that all comes back to involving the right stakeholders from the get-go getting their buy-in but actually having the right plans in place to make sure that you know, all of this money that we're investing and all this research we're doing, we're actually making sure that we're seeing those benefits. And that comes down to the people who are going to be using them at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. No, that's so true. It's that, uh, you know, investment versus reward uh, aspect uh, that I think people, uh, when they're jumping into a new platform, maybe get a bit distracted by the shiny tools <laughs> and don't really see that, oh, you know, there's actually a lot more below the surface that we have to really think about and invest actual time up front with before you can actually fly like it's that whole walk before you can fly mentality right um but you know why should i guess as is the bigger question is, is is about organizations moving to a platform why should they even consider doing that and before we talk about sort of the risk versus rewards which we've got a few listed here that we want to go through um i want to talk quite a bit more to the stats john because um you'll be happy to hear i've got one from hubspot in particular that they've <laughs> quoted and um, which i'll quote back is that businesses that are using marketing automation experiences on an average generate 17 percent more revenue growth every year that like just that alone really pays for the platform itself out, outright. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. uh, without a doubt. Um, and I think a big part of that is that, uh, and so I'm a small to medium business uh, growth specialist. And I, I think the biggest challenge in building a successful business is actually going out and starting it and finding that idea and getting that product, getting that pr value prop right. Um, but where so many businesses, their potential is actually, uh, it's, hindered that it's almost like having shackles on right it's bumpers up when you're bowling although that's probably the wrong metaphor to use because i bowl better with bumpers up typically <laughs> but <laughs> as do i as do i you're never too old to have bumpers up when you're doing bowling <laughs> no, absolutely not um but it, it is the technology and that you know their customer journeys are becoming increasingly complex mm. um and technology can help but it can also very much hinder your ability to actually deliver a, a remarkable customer experience mm. um and that's where I think a lot of what we'll talk about today, delineating between CRM platforms mm. versus, you know, software solutions mm. is that key difference between helping and, and hindering businesses. Yeah. Um, I, I heard a term uh, uh, from, a, from another HubSpotter uh, a couple of weeks ago called Franken system. And I absolutely love it. Oh, um, do tell. Because <laughs> it, it, it's describing and, you know, you guys would have worked with so many companies uh, who are, who are in this scenario. But a Franken system is that tech stack where they have six different marketing tools, right? Different tool for forms and lead catcher, a CRM that's a database, uh, you know, bolted on sales uh, enablement tools. We won't even talk about like customer service and managing, but right, <laughs> you know, there's 20 pieces of the pie um, and that's more though. So those solutions uh, and that's why we're talking about a growth platform today, right? It's like, what are the benefits that you can actually get mm. by finding the system that can do most of what you need to do? Because um, there'll never be that one system that can do everything, but can mm. do most of what you need to do, uh, but then is adaptable enough 
uh, to then be able to work with and talk to other systems as well. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Uh, it is that platform, you know, that's continuously evolving and changing as the market grows. Like for instance, HubSpot introducing AI, it saw that within the market that a lot of other platforms were doing that. Um, and to their credit, they were one of the first that, you know, took up that evolution, which is great. And But it goes to show, and to that point that you made, it's that, you know, platforms that can show that they will adapt with the times and therefore in the future probably be that one singular system you will only really need for your business, you know, that, that goes to show like the kind of growth platform you want to go with, right? Mm -hmm. It's those, all those disparate systems, the, you know, the omni-channel experience mm -hmm. for your organization, I think is something that's becoming less and less a thing of today. I'm hoping it's being phased out, uh, <laughs> you know, not just for the sake of the people I work with, my, you know, my clients, but also for our sake too, you know, for trying to navigate through all those. It's just so much time and effort put more into trying to figure out how every single thing connects and talks to each other versus having one singular place that does most of it. So yeah, I agree with that point. Um, but to move on a bit to a few of the other statistics, um, one is around cost savings too, because that kind of folds into like going to just one system, right? If you're looking to save costs, I mean, one thing that Forbes here says in one of their recent reports that 83% of organizations that have adopted cloud-based solutions have saved money in the long term. Um, and I think that goes without saying. I mean, a lot of people still, I think, use a lot of traditional means, maybe for good reasons. But uh, how do you feel that's sort of transpired from your perspective? Oh, without a doubt, um, I th it'll be very rare that there, uh, for you know, companies that are you know uh, working with one of those Franken systems where there isn't some sort of consolidation of costs. Mm -hmm. um, but I think something to think about when people think about the cost of a, a platform or their tech stack. Uh, a lot of the time they just think about it in terms of, well, how much is uh, the software licenses actually costing me? Uh, and then how much is implementation and, you know, setting it up going to cost me? And I think that's the, the whole picture. Um, I think what a lot of companies sort of fail to think about, and this is really important uh, when actually evaluating the direction that you want to go and what your tech stack is going to look like and your growth platform is going to look like over the next, you know, not 12 months, but three years, five years, as your, your needs continue to expand, um, is what does the rest of it look like? Um, and a really good example of this uh, is uh, Lendlease. I think most people would have heard of them. Mm. Big multinational uh, construction company that's actually just wrapped up their, their HubSpot implementation. Uh, and uh, I have some stats here about it uh, that were actually reported uh, by MI3. Mm. Um, and here we go. So they reduced the number of providers that they had from 20 in their marketing tech stack, 20 tools. Imagine having to learn 20 tools <laughs> as a part of your job when you're, when you're joining a company. Wow, uh, they have to hire octopus people, yeah. I'm sure, to yeah. be able to multitask all those different platforms. Yeah, people much smarter than you and I. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but in doing so, so they were able to cut that back down to, to five platforms wow. um, when they moved to HubSpot. And so, you know, there was that license cost element that actually reduced the cost of their licenses by 79% which is not bad in mm. of itself, right? Mm. Um, but they were able to also uh, achieve an 82% operation cost reduction. Wow. And that's that other uh, elements of cost that I think businesses aren't necessarily thinking about uh, in terms of their spend. And that, that talks about things like support, maintenance, mm. internal staff, you know. Mm. The training that goes into learning all those platforms. Without yeah. a doubt, yeah. Mm. The, the downtime uh, when someone is... Uh, learning a new platform for the first time when they, mm. you know, there's an opportunity cost for that time because mm. it, it's, it's definitely something that cost savings I think is really important to, uh, you know, not just focus on the licensing and uh, the implementation costs because the total picture is often so much, so much broader um, than, than th those two pieces. Yeah, it's that holistic view we were talking about earlier, right? Like you've got, you've got to kind of see what is down the track for your investment. Mm -hmm. You know, the upfront costs can look daunting at first of all, any platform regardless, you know, HubSpot, Salesforce, SAP, Adobe, whatever it might be, you know, but ultimately whatever suits your business best and whatever you think will be worth the risk versus reward um, is ultimately where you want to point your investment. Um, and then speaking of risk versus reward, I think it's a good uh, segue into just naming a, a few 
the ones that we've identified uh, within the few final minutes we have. Although we might go a bit over, John. We don't really keep too much to the rules here. <laughs> so even though the timer uh, is going to go off in a sec, I am going to keep talking um, because <laughs> it's my show um, <laughs> and you're my guest. So yeah. I will not let a timer dictate how long we can talk for. Um, but what are the risks versus rewards? So, John, one of the key risks um, that I've identified, and I believe you agree with me on this. Oh, there goes the timer. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is integration challenges. Now, um, the risk in that is that a growth platform for an existing business can be a complex endeavor to, as we talked about before, put in legacy systems, you know, company data to translate over, you know, properties from uh, all your previous contact records, company records, deal records into a new system. Things can get lost, you know, things can be missed, history can be missed, um, and all those integrations and moving everything together to get then employees to adapt to new processes. Again, massive challenge, massive call, like you said, with Lendlease, you know, having all those different 20-odd, um, you know, touch points and systems to work through. But then I think what's good to highlight is the reward at the end of that. If you do go down that risk factor, you do then have at the end of the line the enhanced data management that you get. That's one of the key rewards I wanted to highlight there. The reward in this case is that you have a streamlined data management and improved customer relationship management process. The new CRM system often centralizes all your company data, your contact data, leading to better customer insights overall and then more efficient efficiency between teams. You know, if a marketing team hand over a potential lead to a sales person, you know, all the history is there all in the one place and they don't have to spend any time moving it across. So uh, I think that's a really important thing to highlight, the whole enhanced data management. Do you see quite a bit of that occurring with the people you talk about? Without a doubt. Um, I think, you know, it, it's a bit of a cliche, but knowledge is power, right? Mm. It's information is, is the currency of businesses. It's, it's uh, having good, accessible, usable data uh, is absolutely critical in an environment that's becoming increasingly complex and being able to understand you know, what's working, what isn't, and being able to make better dis biz, uh, business decisions, mm. that requires good data. Um, mm. So, but there is definitely a risk, right? You know, there, there, there are these systems that you've spent uh, quite some time using and your data is in a bunch of different places. Um, but every day that you sort of go by without actually, you know, fixing the ship and, and getting that, that data right means that every new customer you acquire, every new campaign you do, that, that there's this massive missed opportunity uh, where you can be learning from every single day that progresses without uh, without having the right systems in place to capture that data. Yeah. Um, but it's very much a, uh, it's a bit of a bite the bullet, you know, yeah. when, when are we going to invest uh, yeah. and overcome those challenges? Because there's, there's often little stepping stones you can take before biting that bullet, right? Because even like HubSpot offers a free version of the platform that you could start testing the waters and you know learning from how the user experience is and see if it gels with your organization even before you make a massive investment so 100 percent uh one of the first things when someone's looking at hubspot we tell them to do is just download the free uh say uh, sorry sign up to the free crm and install the tracking code on your website yeah because so many businesses just have no insights into you know which of their contacts are actually looking at what pages what pages are performing well all of those sort of insights, right? That mm. the second that we can start collecting that data, um, whether or not we have the processes and systems in place to use it now, you know, six months down the track when we do, we have that data ready to go. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And data, like you said, is really powerful, really key. It's king to performing well these days in this market. Um, and speaking of this market, you know, the next uh, risk, obviously, uh, is around financial investment, which I think a lot of people get scared off by price tags of growth platforms these days. You know, a growth platform, major risk is taking the bullet, uh, biting the bullet, maybe taking it too, <laughs> <laughs> around the financial investment. But then I guess the reward to that, to speak quickly on the other side, is that I think the obvious reward, which is that you have down the track cost efficiencies, cost efficiencies and scalability that you can work towards as an organization. You know, like Lendlease's example, cutting back on all those additional systems, investing into one, big cost up front to achieve that. And what I think I saw them at inbound their presentation on that in the first like nine months or something, they got that up and running. But then after the fact, they just showed like the scalability and growth trajectory of their business skyrocket. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and, and look, um, you know, we keep talking about HubSpot being a platform. Um, I think uh, people will be surprised at how often I, I tell, uh, you know, potential, potential clients that I'm working with that, 
at the end of the, the day, we're not the right solution for you now. Yeah. Um, we might be in a year or two or three years, but mm. right now this isn't right for you. Um, mm. uh, but on the flip side of that, there is that upfront investment and that can scare people off. But, you know, sometimes the difference that you get uh, in terms of setting yourself up for the next five years from a you know, couple of grand difference in the cost of a system, mm. um, short-term thinking is that, that uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I want to save a buck now, but then all of those additional sort of components of that total cost of ownership that we we're talking about earlier mm. end up uh, you know blowing out well beyond what they saved on the first year of that contract right yeah yeah um, so i'm excited for the toolkit test te- section because then yeah. we'll break down a couple of those those components <laughs> absolutely um, and before we get into that here's our final uh risk versus reward which is um pretty much what we were sort of alluding to throughout the whole uh, points, all the points we're making today, which was around the risk being change management. So, you know, changing the way employees work um, and it's quite disruptive to general workflows. There's training involved, you know, and new tools to adopt, etc. cetera. Um, the reward versus that obviously is increased productivity, which I think goes without saying. I don't think we need to talk so much more to that, but, you know, the way you get to that increased productivity Increased productivity is what I want to get into next before we get into our toolkit section, which is about how you should be tackling this, right? So the how, I think, you know, and, you know, you can speak quite a bit to this, John, I'm sure, because you work with a lot of partners such as Solid Stone. Um, we at Solid Stone, as an elite partner to HubSpot, often say it is, and not often, but always say that it is the strategy first, the technology second. Like, to your point, the growth platform that they may have in mind, this particular client that we're talking to, this organization may not just be ready for it. Like you said, maybe in a year or two's time, you know, maybe it's an investment thing. Maybe it's just a mindset thing about growth, right? Maybe they can't handle the capacity of growth. I always ask them that. Can you grow? Yes or no? If yes, HubSpot might be a good growth platform you to consider. But if they're not, if they're getting enough in at that time to suit their quota and they don't really need to go that much further at this point, then, you know, a growth platform in general is probably not the best fit for them so you know we want to see our clients get rewards and um, over you know all the risks that they invest in so ultimately it's that roi that we want them to see so step one you know choose the strategy first sit with the people like solid stone who will help you figure that out then choose a technology second would you agree with those steps john oh without a doubt yeah and look a lot of the time um a lot of companies their objective isn't to uh, to grow and massively scale up, you know, three x revenue year on year, and <laughs> hire a hundred people, like, and that's perfectly fine. You know, business people start businesses for a variety of reasons, um, mm. and some are very comfortable being in, in in maintenance mode, and they don't need a platform that's going to uh, ma- enable them to massively scale up. You know, their marketing, their sales, their service uh, processes, and and outcomes, and supercharge those results. Mm. They just need something that works for them now until they, you know, retire in three years' time or, or something <laughs> like that, right? Mm-hmm. It comes down to the why are we doing this in the first place? Mm. How do we plan on actually uh, executing that? And that's where working with a partner like Salted Stone is so important. Mm. Um, and then the technology, uh, that is the, the last piece of the puzzle. Oh, so true. Yeah, yeah. And and it's perfectly, um, what you hit the nail on the head there perfectly, which was around the goals, right? Out, outlining what it is they want to achieve. And it's part of the mapping process that we do as part of our growth strategy development as we go, all right, we'll sit down with you and all your teams and figure out what those goals are. You know, that's the strategy behind it. Where you want to go? Is it you want to sell the business in five years? You know, do you want to grow by 50 people in five years? You know, or do you just want to retire to your point in five (laughs) years and, you know, pass it on or sell it off to someone else? Do you want to be set up for that? And, you know, that's perfectly fine. And, you know, there's no, there's no. And that being the case, right, you probably don't want to, um, you know, pick a platform that over the next five years we can do a billion different things, right? Mm, Yeah. That's not that's not your driving motivation behind this. Hundred <laughs> percent. So you know, to that point, when you're doing the strategy with whoever you're working with, making sure you're mapping it all out, digging deep with your teams to understand those goals and get company alignment on those goals too. Um, there shouldn't be any secrets, and I don't like <laughs> you know that kind of silo mentality. Uh, we talked about in the previous episode of RevOps, where every single department should be working towards revenue growth. Ultimately, marketing should be helping sales, sales helping service, etc. So, ultimately, get company alignment on those goals, and then execute within a, an agreed timeline, right? And that's important. Roadmap 
you know, take the steps to roadmap and work out what milestones you're going to hit over the course of six, 12 months, whatever it is. Um, and then onboard your organization onto these platforms and get someone to help you with that who understands the platform ob from an objective point of view, right? That's why it's good to work with someone like Salted Stone who do onboarding for sales and marketing tools like HubSpot. Um, reach out to them and get them to be an objective person who can say to your teams, this is how you should use it. Don't worry about this, worry about this, you know, and take the steps, you know, incrementally and train them bit by bit and on what's important to them and what aligns with your strategy overall to grow as a business. And finally, you know, that training shouldn't just end there. You know, you should get feedback from the team um, and then over time finesse the way you're using the platform through listening to that feedback. And you can even use HubSpot tools to send out surveys to get that <laughs> feedback, can't you, John? <laughs> Thank you for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, look, we'll wrap things up there on the main topic, uh, but I think we got through a lot there. Uh, I just wanted to highlight uh, one uh, call to action that we have, which we'll link below. It's a link to one of our blogs, which is written by the fabulous uh, solutions architect guru we have at Salter Stone, Mr. Michael Peach, or Peachy, as he's known. Uh, the blog is called, So You've Bought HubSpot. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> go to our website solderstone.com and search that blog or we'll link it below and you can click to it but with that said we will now get into our The Toolkit <laughs> I warned John about that uh, <laughs> just so you know and he agreed that uh that it was going to be a weird moment of us sitting still and doing nothing <laughs> and he was going to try not to not look like a stunned mullet uh, did you achieve that John? <laughs> Yeah, to an extent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look back on the footage later and send you a screenshot of what you look like. <laughs> um, so toolkit sections. So, uh, John, I'll, I'll talk to my toolkit first and then I'll, I'll let you talk to yours because you've got two really cool ones that really align well with our topic on uh, if a business adopting a growth platform. So the first one I will talk to, uh, which is one of mine, is the Teamwork to HubSpot integration. I don't know if you've used Teamwork much at all, John in previous jobs I haven't actually, in. so I'm quite excited to learn a little bit about the way that you guys are using it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're a big investor and and, and big promoter of, of teamwork. In fact, when we were at Inbound, they were the booth right behind us and they invited us to their to their party afterwards <laughs> and you know, hung out with the teamwork team. Great people. And it was and, and were you were a big promoter of teamwork before or after the, the party? <laughs> uh well <laughs> more so during the party uh, because okay. you know the the drinks were free. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I have always been a big advocate. Um and even more so after Hub, uh, uh, inbound, HubSpot's inbound because they released an integration with uh HubSpot uh which they'd had before but now it's actually evolved to be even better. And the reason behind that is because we use it uh, at HubSpot, um, sorry, at Salted Stone quite a fair bit, uh, teamwork, and, and obviously HubSpot as well. We wanted the two to talk to each other even better so that when now we uh, close off a deal in our sales pipeline uh, in, in HubSpot, what happens next is there is an automation in place that can actually pull in the deal record into uh, teamwork and create a project, which then pulls in all the details of the contact, the company, and the deal record. So you've got basically everything housed into one place, all talking to each other, and then immediately, like the person who is handling the project, say the account manager, can jump in and, you know, tweak it up to however they need to have it tweaked up to, um, but they can immediately start working from that project without needing to do any setup, which is awesome. And then they can invite, you know, the client into it, whoever's going to be the point of contact to sit into the platform as well, obviously with limited visibility, but, you know, they immediately can start using the tools straight away, which I think is brilliant. So if you're ever looking to sort of, you know, uh, and this goes to one of our earlier points about sort of uh, joining up additional platforms to HubSpot and want something that really works well with projects and, you know, project management overall between you and clients, highly recommend uh, Teamwork and therefore, if you're using HubSpot as well, the Teamwork to HubSpot integration. So really cool. I thought I'd just share that with everyone here. I love that. And I think as well that you hit the nail on the head. It very much talks to one of our previous points in that it's rare that you're going to find a platform that will do 100% of mm. everything that you need it, uh, need it to do. Uh, so when you are thinking about uh, well, what is going to be the right platform for, for my business, uh, I think you've got to think about what your priorities are, where your team is mostly living um, when it comes to that core system that you use. But as important a consideration is how is that then going to talk to some of the other solutions that we are going to need as a part of our tech stack? 
mm. you know, uh, like Lendlease didn't go from 20 to one platform, right? They went from 20 to five because mm. there are certain parts uh, of their, their new tech stack that HubSpot's not going to be able to do and that's perfectly fine. Mm. But it's about the ability to actually uh, connect with other tools mm. in a way that they do seamlessly integrate, that they talk to each other mm. and it doesn't require an extraordinarily complex custom <laughs> integration with 20 different tools that will break and, every and I second think, day. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's really true. And I think HubSpot doesn't ultimately want um, to do everything right i mean it, it wouldn't it'd be pretty boring uh, inbound events if no <laughs> vendors were there who spoke to hubspot and said hey we can integrate with your platform or you know and that didn't happen you can imagine how you know desolate <laughs> the whole inbound event would be probably a lot smaller too so you know i think ultimately hubspot wants to play nice with a lot of other platforms and have them you know integrate you know with other aspects of their business so it's not really i think even in their remit to be the one stop solution for everything so no, no. but uh, speaking of the investment to hubspot um talk us through your first toolkit there john because it's called a total cost of ownership calculator which i'm curious to hear more about yeah so i think that ties in quite nicely into uh one of the points we've been making today which uh is that there are so many different elements uh, and uh, that can end up ballooning out over time uh, when it comes to actually the, the costs of the, the system that you choose to go with. Um, and a lot of people just think about, uh, like I said before, that licensing cost, that implementation cost. Mm. But the total cost of ownership that we're talking about, that's the sum of all of the costs and expenses related to purchasing in the first place, implementing, operating, managing your software solutions, whether that's direct, whether that's indirect and just know internal staffing hours trying to tweak and change things and uh and train new uh new staff members yeah, you know at the end of the day like the cost of owning a software product be it hubspot be it another platform goes well beyond just that sticker tag right um but a lot of the time uh it, it can be less than transparent to actually understand well what are some of the hidden costs associated with certain products um because at the end of the day end of the day uh, if we understand tco we actually understand what a uh, bit of software cost you know a lot of time in some solutions it can cost uh, and i think lendlease again is a good example you know, five to eight times the original purchase p- price than what you think you're actually getting um, so that total cost of ownership cal- calculator uh, for a couple of different parts of our platform uh, but also comparing with other products as well actually breaks it down into all of the different things that you need to be thinking about uh when when purchasing a software wow that's that's really cool um so yeah we'll link to that calculator below um but i'm very curious to try it out and and as you know john i do quite a few sales calls and whatnot with potential new clients um that's something you think i could probably bring up during those relevant conversations where we're talking about you know the actual cost of ownership um with choosing a platform like hubspot Without a doubt. And, and conversely, and it, this feeds quite well into the second tool uh, that I wanted to talk about today, mm. uh, but it's a, it's a return on investment calculator. Mm. Um, Very nice. I think, uh, you know, we can share a lot of high level sort of averages uh, for, and, and a lot of businesses do when it, uh, they talk about you buy our product, you might get 15% return or, or, or something like that. Um, we've gone a little bit deeper. So uh, in terms of our ROI calculator, we actually have uh, what we calculate is that return on investment figure that you can experience if you are to move on to HubSpot. Um, but that's actually based on aggregated data from, uh, it's a big number, 177,000 uh, plus HubSpot customers globally wow. across different industries using different industry benchmarks, regional ben- benchmarks. Uh, you know, it, it, It's a product that's used internationally, but there's always going to be huge variations in the results that people see in different markets. Um, but it breaks it down into all of the elements that go into that ROI figure, you know, from a marketing perspective, uh, our traffic generation, our, uh, our lead capture, our conversion rates, uh, you know, cross marketing to your existing database, all of these elements uh, that actually help people understand uh, specifically what are the gains. A lot of people, a lot of companies will say, purchase our product and you'll see, see this benefit. And a simple uh, question to them going, and how? <laughs> can often yeah. get, a, get, get a less than specific yeah. response. Yeah, um, yeah. That specificity I think is invaluable. And I love the fact that you're comparing to um, all those different customers, over 170,000, I think you said, um, which is really cool. 
Um, so I'm really curious to try that. And we will link this below as well if you guys want to check that out. Um, but thanks for sharing that with us, Sean. It's a really invaluable tool. Um, and yeah, I'm curious to even try it out for some of my current clients to, you know, see about how they can potentially, you know, use a growth platform, you know, more comprehensively or better than they're currently doing. So yeah, love it. Great. Thanks for sharing that, John. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> and um, and thanks again for joining us on uh, Under the Hood. Uh, you know, it was, it was great to have you on today's episode uh, and we'll definitely want to have you back <laughs> how did you find it was it was it enjoyable uh, it was great um i uh one piece of feedback i was listening to a um uh, a previous podcast that you guys did with uh the wonderful liz gibbons she's ah. our cms sales specialist elizabeth and there was mention of leather chairs whiskey and uh cigars <laughs> but i'm looking around the studio and i'm i'm noting a distinct absence of those uh but uh no it was yeah. a pleasure mate and I'm happily come on again in the future <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we can accommodate with cigars and, and drinks next time i mean that was just part of getting elizabeth on the show is that it was her prerequisite in her contract said it specifically had as a very interesting point on their contract saying we must have whiskey and cigars present if you want me i'm gonna uh, get i need to get negotiation lessons lessons from <laughs> liz yeah she'll get she'll get your good agent i'm sure <laughs> but thank you john sapleton um for joining us on today's episode and uh, if people want to talk to you um how can they reach out to you what's what's your best way to get contacted yeah definitely so uh i, I will share my linkedin um i post a fair bit on there uh, just pieces around what I'm seeing in the market, maybe some of the developments uh, that we are making in terms of HubSpot. Um, and so I, if you shoot me a message, send me a connection request, I'm always happy to have a chat um, and share my experience uh, working with, with your your business, that industry, uh, and see if there might be a fit. Because uh, I, I think we've driven this home pretty hard tonight. Mm -hmm. We might always uh, be the fit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, worth having a chat to see if there is that 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 opportunity. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, John. And and John's insights are invaluable. So do hit him up if you're curious to hear if a growth platform is a good solution for your business and if you're ready to adopt one. And I hope this uh, today's episode has been insightful of Under the Hood and you've learned a few of the risk versus rewards. Uh, but we're going to announce the next topic for next week's episode uh, or next fortnight's episode of Under the Hood. And that will be <clears throat> the winning formula for video-driven sales success. That's the winning formula for video-driven sales success with a special guest who I'm not going to reveal, John. It's not going to be John next time, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, John. Um, we're going to replace you with another guest, unfortunately. It is going to be somebody we're going to be uh, calling in from America, in fact. Uh, so, you know, someone who I met at Inbound, and, and I'll give you a sneak uh, indication who it might be. They are a TikTok influencer. Uh, a very well-renowned TikTok influencer, which I'm oh. very excited to have, <laughs> um, which is kind of cool. Um, and I'm really excited to hear what she has to say on the show. Oops, I mentioned it was a she. Oops, <laughs> I have said too much. We must wrap things up. Thank you, Bella Vista Hotel, for having us yet again and hosting Under the Hood. We will catch you next week. My name has been Gabe McCarthy um, with the lovely John Stapleton from HubSpot, and we'll see you in the next episode.